Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Doc was a little mistaken when sending DeLorean to 2015. Even in 2020, we still need roads. Trains, buses, trucks, taxis, motorbikes, and bicycles still work and break as before. But what awaits the transport system in the real, not cinematic future? Can we fly an air taxi like Corbin Dallas? Will I be able to get drunk on my nephew's bar mitzvah so that afterwards an unmanned vehicle takes me away from the squinting eyes of relatives? Who will build trains that move faster than airplanes? When will airplanes start using mustard as fuel? Yes, the one in your hot dog. We'll talk about the latter at the end, so bear with us. The transport system is undergoing the greatest transformation in history, and the Brain Frame team has already prepared a trolley that will ride to the most interesting inventions in this area. Why a trolley? Because science is not looking for easy ways. So ring the bell and let's drive! The one near the subscribe button will do. Avanti! For decades, engineers have tried to prototype unmanned vehicles. The underlying idea is very simple. Equip the car with cameras that can track all the objects around it and respond to movement. Train the onboard computer to the rules of the road, indicate the destination, and you're good to go. But it's not so simple. Driving is actually a difficult process. Following the list of traffic rules is not enough to drive like a living person does, because we do things inaccessible to a robot. We can communicate with other drivers simply by looking into their eyes or giving a signal. We react to weather conditions and make decisions based on personal experience, even simple driving techniques. For example, tracking objects around a car on the road are actually much more complicated than they seem. Take Google's sister company, Waymo, a leader in unmanned vehicles. Waymo cars use high-resolution cameras and LiDAR, a way of estimating distances to objects by reflecting light and sound from objects. Car computers combine all of the gathered data to create an idea of where other cars, cyclists, pedestrians, and obstacles are and where they are moving. This requires a lot of training data to form a car's understanding of how other objects can move. At the same time, training takes place not only on the road, but also in simulations, and engineers must be sure that their artificial intelligence systems will correctly transfer the simulation data to the real world. However, today the Waymo CEO, John Krafchick, argues that unmanned vehicles are no longer future nor fiction. They're already here. But other vehicles, which seemed sci-fi in the past, are now here even more. In anticipation of unmanned vehicles and transportation pipes like in Futurama, the use of monowheels and electric scooters has become normal across the world. You won't surprise anyone with this, but where will it all evolve in the near future? At the very least, everything will become more compact, like for example, Solo Wheel. This is a gyro-stabilized electric unicycle, which you can ride hands-free while sending messages or scrolling through memes on the go. Although, we do not advise you to do this on the road. You have your workplace for those things. The bike is fast enough. It speeds up to 10 miles per hour, weighs 24 pounds, can carry up to 220 pounds, and holds the battery charge up to 10 miles for a price of $1,500. The same company produces Orbit Wheels. The idea is simple. Two legs, two wheels, let's go! Orbit Wheels is a cross between a skateboard and a pair of inline skates, and the large wheel radii allow you to ride on a variety of surfaces. Slip your legs through the holes, the wheels spin around your feet, and you ride. Using rhythmic wave movements, each leg moves independently, giving you amazing freedom of motion. Having learned the technique of movements on orbit wheels, you can perform tricks cooler than Tony Hawk and break both legs at the same time. Your ticket to the emergency room will cost $99.95 per pair of wheels. But be that as it may, these wheels travel on the Earth's surface. But can the personal transport of the future help us fly over it? Who didn't dream about self-tied sneakers or a hoverboard after watching Back to the Future Part 2? By the way, a few years ago, Lexus embodied this idea. Kinda. Their skate really flew above the ground, but only at a specifically built skate park covered with super strong magnets. What about devices that let you float anywhere? Flyboard Air is the brainchild of former world figure skating champion and inventor Frankie Zapata, and behind it is incredible technology. 
Four turbines with the capacity of 1,000 HP are installed in the Frankie's Flying Segway, capable of accelerating the device to 200 km per hour. Zapata Flyboard Air is different from other boards. You have nothing to hold on to, and you stand on it and do not wear it like a jetpack. By the way, we talked about it in a video about future warfare. The pop-up at the top will lead you to it. Zapata specifically uses turbines and claims that the power-to-weight ratio is 10 times better than in other energy sources, which is where the huge power of the device comes from. The Arca board is not as beautiful as the Mattel hoverboard from the movie, but it's the price we pay for it to really fly using modern technology. And although Arca board looks like a soaring dishwashing sponge, its creators claim that it has incorporated years of development and innovation. About 90% of the interior space is occupied by 36 electric fans and lithium polymer batteries. All this provides as much as 272 horsepower. Very good for a kitchen tool. When you turn it on, Arca board will lift you 20 to 30 centimeters above ground and allow you to go to the nearest supermarket with a breeze. True, the whole district will know about your trip. The device makes a loud buzzing sound with a volume of 92 dBm. If you like riding lawnmowers, this is it. The maximum speed is approximately 20 km per hour, but you still need to learn how to stay steady on the board. Meanwhile, Russians are busy in their free time from influencing American elections. Hoversurf, founded by Russian entrepreneur Alexei Atomanov, has created an apparatus that combines a traditional motorcycle with quadcopter propellers. Now, all affluent extreme lovers can finally take their $150,000 off their hearts, along with a compulsory three-day flight training course in California worth $10,000. Powered by gasoline or a rechargeable battery, the motorcycle weighs approximately 114 kilograms and can reach speeds up to 96 kilometers per hour at a recommended safe flight height of 5 meters from the ground. The company has already received approval from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, which gives drivers the option to use hover bikes at airfields or in rural areas without a pilot's license. However, among the first customers may be the Dubai Police Force, which has already shown great interest in this technology. You will not envy criminals. This thing is worse than Robocop because it can grind a perpetrator during a chase. The idea of flying cars is dead in the water. Just imagine the number of accidents in an unlimited flight space. Drones are a different matter, though. Today, they allow us to spy on our neighbors and deliver orders, but we'll soon be able to transport people. For example, Pop-Up is the result of a collaboration between Atal Design and Airbus. This is a capsule that can connect either to an autonomous flying platform with an electric rotor created by Airbus or to Audi's ground-based electric wheelbase. That is, Pop-Up can both ride and fly. 60 kilowatts should be enough to fly 37 miles at 75 miles per hour. The charging time is estimated at a fantastic 15 minutes. Pause for a cup of coffee and the machine is ready to take off again and AI will take care of driving the vehicle. Meanwhile, the Chinese manufacturer Ehong is also creating autonomous passenger drones. Their quadcopters and octocopters can transport passengers without the participation of a pilot. The idea may not be as scary as it seems at first glance. In 2018, the Dutch prince Peter Christian flew a Model 216 autonomous air vehicles in a demonstration flight, while the rest of the Dutch royal family watched. Ehong claims that in 2018, one of the 216s was sold to a private owner, and since then, another 60 have been sold in the United States, Asia, and Europe. Ehong 216 AAV flies at a speed of 130 km per hour, driven by 16 electric motors, which are connected to 16 propeller blades and a coaxial design with double bonds. The minimum flight duration is 30 minutes, and the maximum range is 35 km. It takes only one hour to charge, for which you need a 220-volt or 380-volt power supply. We wonder, will the iPhone charger work here? The Ehong 216 consists of a carbon composite material and metals, weighs 360 kilograms, and has a small Airbus design that can accommodate two passengers with ample legroom and room for luggage. Its fuselage rests on a rigid chassis, which provides sufficient clearance between the ground and the rotors. The device is capable of carrying goods up to 260 kilograms and is equipped with air conditioning, a modern interior, and internet access. Yes, new brain frame videos can be watched right mid-flight. And this fantastic vehicle is closer than you think. Ehong recently received permission to operate its device in Norway, Spain, and China, 
and it looks like it'll soon be allowed in the United States. The company believes that over time, such drones will turn from the entertainment for the rich to the everyday transport for the majority. So get ready to look outside and see a picture cooler than in the fifth element. Though, in this variation of the future, instead of the domestic manufacturer, Made in China will be modestly displayed on machines' backs. Are you ready for such a future, Marty? The Hyperloop project was introduced by the prolific inventor and entrepreneur Elon Musk in 2012. Can't get enough of this guy. Hyperloop is a promising high-speed subway replacement that consists of low-pressure pipes that contain sealed capsules, with the ability to transport passengers from, say, San Francisco to Los Angeles in just 35 minutes at speeds up to 700 miles per hour, faster than a commercial plane. Hyperloop capsules reach this speed by sliding through sealed tubes, from which most of the air has been removed by vacuum pumps, reducing resistance. The capsules hang in the air directly above the track with friction-reducing magnets and are powered by a linear induction motor that also uses magnetic forces. Since modern systems have been designed to provide on-demand services, capsules will be able to ship every couple of minutes, which is much more regular than other high-speed rail networks and can greatly reduce waiting times. Although Hyperloop has been proclaimed the first new mode of transport in more than 100 years, there are still significant technological challenges that must be overcome, such as the difficulty of maintaining vacuum in the pipes at such long distances. Musk decided to let others build on his work, which led to the creation of new businesses and groups dedicated to promoting this technology. Supported by Richard Branson, Virgin Hyperloop One successfully tested a full-scale system prototype in 2017 and hopes to deploy a fully functional system in three years. Hart Hyperloop and Transpod are working on their own systems. A full-blown 30-meter capsule prepares for testing on the Hyperloop TT test track in Toulouse, France. If everything goes well, the first passenger tests will take place this year, and the first commercial system will go into operation by 2022 in Abu Dhabi. Thought we forgot about the mustard plane? Brain Frame never forgets about food, because proper nutrition is good for the brain. Qantas's Boeing Dreamliner 787-9, powered partially by mustard seeds, was the first biofuel aircraft in the world. The 15-hour flight between Australia and the United States used mixed fuel, which was 10% made from Brassica carinata, an industrial type of mustard seed that farmers can grow between regular sowing cycles. Using mustard, it was possible to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 7% compared with a regular airline flight on the same route from Los Angeles to Melbourne. Compared to jet fuels, Carinata biofuels reduce emissions by 80% over the fuel life cycle. Do you hear that beautiful sound in the distance? Is that Greta Thunberg crying of happiness? Pretty cool, right? The main thing is that the planes do not start flying on sausages, otherwise we won't get anything to eat. By the way, maybe we should make a separate video about the aviation of the future, or about teleportation. It's 100% transport of the future. What to choose? Help us and write in the comments. The future of transport technology is much closer than any other. Already, we can ride in a car without a driver, fly over the house of an envious neighbor in an aeromobile, and solve the murder in the Orient Express that hovers on a magnetic cushion. Well, be that as it may, the question of safety remains open when it comes to new means of transportation. No technology is 100% software error-proof. After all, even 1% of the error can cost someone their life. At BrainFrame, we always look at the future with hope and at the present with skepticism. In the meantime, while you dream about flying on a vacation on a Mustang, we are stubbornly leading our trolley to the next release. What are you doing there? One, two, one, two! Cheer up, guys. You're scientists. Brain frame out. <laughs>